Hello everybody, I'm Sarah Kasani, I'm a PhD student at the University of Saskatchewan. Uh, currently I'm working at the MadMag lab in this university and my work is basically the applications of uh, deep learning, uh, specifically convolutional neural networks for computer-aided diagnosis uh, system. Um, the paper that I'm going to uh, present today is uh, the automatic uh, uh, polyp segmentation using convolutional neural network. If you have any question about this presentation, uh, please send me the email to uh, sorry at signusas.ca. Um, first of all, I will give you a short introduction to the problem statement of this study, and after that, I will present uh, the proposed methodology to address the problem, and finally, I will uh, discuss uh, the results of this, uh, obtained from this research. So, uh, colorectal cancer is the third most common cancer-related death in the United States, uh, in, which is common in both men and women. According to the annual report provided by American Cancer Society, uh, uh, about more than uh, 100,000 uh, new cases of this, uh, of colon cancer will be diagnosed in 2019, and also more than 44,000 new cases of rectal cancer will be diagnosed in both men and women in 2019. So the high mortality rate and also the um, considerable healthcare costs associated with this type of cancer has inspired researchers to develop more accurate uh, model for early cancer detection to improve uh, uh, the um, survival rate. So, uh, developing computer aided diagnosis uh, system using convolutional neural network could assist in life uh, uh, critical uh, diagnosis in this area. Uh, currently, um, colonoscopy is the gold standard for screening and detecting polyps because uh, polyps is um, the first sign of colorectal cancer, and if they are uh, they're diagnosed and uh, removed at their first uh, stage, it, it can um, hugely reduce uh, their rate of death and also improve the survival rate. So. Uh, analysis of polyps in colonoscopy images is highly dependent to the experience endoscopics. It is um, considered as a challenging task because of the variations in the size and the shapes of polyps uh, between um, different patients. Another issue that exists uh, uh, during the colonoscopy is the misrate of a very small polyps, which is very important. And this happened mostly because of the presence of um, occlusion. This occlusion could be shadows, reflections, uh, blurriness, and also uh, the elimination uh, um, conditions during the colonoscopy. As you can see at this uh, figure in this slides, uh, these different kind of occlusions can adversely affect the performance of CNN uh, and also the quality of the segmented uh, polyp region. So the recent ad, uh, development based on the applications of the um, convolutional neural network uh, achieved promising results in the segmentation and extraction of polyps uh, during uh, colonoscopy. So the main motivation of this paper is to compare the performance of different convolutional neural networks and modules. These, uh, the example that we use for these studies are squeeze uh, and um, excision uh, blocks, the inception blocks, uh, the residual blocks, and also um, the dense blocks for 
building uh, the whole architecture for autom automatic polyp segmentation. In this study, we evaluate the performance of different CNN architecture that incorporating um, the CNN module. Uh, these architectures are ResNet, DenseNet, Inception V3, Inception ResNet, um, SE, ResNex. Uh, each of the, those architectures um, have various modules uh, in their architecture. And we use these architectures as feature extractor to the encoder part of a unit uh, architecture to investigate the impact of incorporating module in, in extracting high level features uh, from the input image. As you know, the feature extraction is uh, one of the most important stage in uh, training deep learning in, uh, uh, our models as the better the features that we extract, the best better performance that we can get from an architecture. So to do this experiment, we use a CVC Clinic DB. Uh, this is a database that is publicly available, and you can refer, uh, refer to the reference and download it freely. And um, this uh, database consists of 300 standard definition uh, colonoscopy images. Each image has a resolution uh, of um, 574 uh, times 500 pixel, and uh, each image contains only one polyps. And um, associated with each uh, image, we have a grand truth frame. Uh, which the polyp area is segmented. So before we uh, fit the images into the uh, deep CNN architecture, first we need to pre-process them. Uh, the first pre-processing step for this study was resizing. Uh, due to the black margin of each images, we center cropped all of the images uh, from the original size of 574 times to 500 uh, to the fixed size of 500 times to 500 to um, remove all of those non-informative uh, black background around the images. Uh, the second pre-processing step that we used for this study was uh, Z-score normalization. These uh, pre-processing steps help to remove the bias from the input images and give us a uniform uh, distribution from the input image. And uh, we do this by um, scaling the image in uh with a zero mean and a standard deviation, uh, and a standard deviation of one uh, for each input images separately. The next uh, pre-processing step that we took to accomplish this study uh, was data augmentation. As uh, the provided data set was really small, it contained only 200 images, so we had to uh, do uh, the data augmentation to improve um, uh, the performance of a segmentation test. We employ different data augmentation techniques such as horizontal and vertical, flipping, rotating, zooming, uh, and different types of sharpening, contrast, and also blurring to uh, generate more images from the original image. As you can see in this image, the figure a is the original image, and uh, the rest of them, figure B, C, uh, D, F, are uh, the result of applying different data augmentation um, techniques on, the, on that um, original image. For feature extraction, we use the transfer learning strategy. The transfer learning strategy, the main idea behind it is to transfer the knowledge that already learned uh, in another domain of dataset and transfer it to the new dataset for the current task. So 
Um, transfer learning has many advantages, such as it can improve the performance of the current uh, deep CNN model. It can reduce the issue of overfitting, which is a common issue in training very deep uh, model with a limited uh, data set. It also helps to reduce the computational costs and also help to accelerate to speed up the convergence of the um, current network. So um, for this research, instead of training a model from scratch, we um, uh, just transfer the weight that already trained on ImageNet dataset to the um, current um, deep CNN architecture and initial, initialize uh, the weights of the current deep CNN um, with the weight that already trained on, on ImageNet dataset. We use the unit architecture uh, as a backbone of our study. UNIT is an encoder and decoder convolutional network. It won the ISBI cell tracking challenge in 2015. These architectures is um, the encoder part or that sampling part of UNIT architecture can learn feature maps and the decoder part of um, this um, architecture provides precise segmentation both Encoder and decoder has the um, um, convolutional filters alternated with max pooling layer and also relo activations. As mentioned in previous slides, uh, the main contribution of this work is to uh, investigate how different CNN modules can uh, affect the uh, performance of deep CNN for um, poly segmentation. So uh, to do uh, this study, we uh, replace the down sampling part of the unit architectures with different um, uh, CNN models. We uh, selected five deep CNN architectures as feature extractor, such as ResNet, DenseNet, Inception V3, Inception uh, ResNet v, uh, V2, and also Squeeze, and Excision Network, uh, which is also known uh, to SE ResNet to compare their performance in polyp segmentation. For example, residual block in ResNet architecture consists of two or three uh, sequential convolutional layers and a supplementary shortcut connection. This shortcut connection helps uh, to, um, to pass the features without modification and also help to reduce the, um, uh, the degradation of uh, the gradient in the very deep networks. The inception module in inception v3 architectures, it helps to create a very wide network instead of very deep network. It uh, also uh, is, it, it is um, a multi-scale architecture with different size of features such as 5 by 5, 3 by 3, and also uh, 1 by well, then uh, when the features of each of these level of um, filter size are extracted, they are concatenated together to and um, pass to the next inception module. In dense modules, uh, it, it's very similar to a ResNet architecture. However, now, uh, instead of using the shortcut connection here, the layers are uh, merged together by concatenation. So all of the features from a previous layer are uh, concatenated to the subsequent uh, layer. In SE ResNex architecture, um, we have an operation that can adaptively recalibrate channel-wise features uh, from each feature maps. Uh, it is an in integration of a ResNet into a squeeze and excision block to further improve the accuracy of the network. And finally, then inception ResNet architecture is a hybrid of um, the inception architecture 
with residual connection to um, improve the representational power of the network. The figure in this slide um, illustrate the proposed CNN uh, network based on a unit architecture. As you can see in this image, there is a U-shaped architecture. And the down sampling part of this architecture is a VGG16 feature extractor, as an example. To measure the performance of the proposed method for polyp segmentation, we employed common segmentation evaluation metric. The, for, the first uh, metric is Jacker's index. It is also known as intersection over union. We also use a dissimilarity score. Uh, to these uh, metrics uh, help us to uh, measure the similarity and also the difference between the predicted mass from the segmentation uh, model and also the grand truth mass. Um, as you can see in this formula, A represents the uh, output binary mass, uh, which is produced uh, from the segmentation uh, met model and also be represent the grand truth mass which is provided from the data set. We also use the accuracy as um, our third metric. The true positive here in the accuracy metrics represent the number of um, correctly predicted uh, pixels as polyps. The false positive represent the misclassified background pixel um, uh, which is classified as a polyp pixel. False negative represent the misclassified uh, poly uh, pixels that misclassified as background. And the uh, true negative represent the background pixels uh, that are correctly uh, classified as background. The accuracy, dice score, and jaguar index of adopting results are summarized um, in the table of this slide. Uh, as you can see in this slide, there is a level of variations in the performance of all of the models. So analyzing this table, uh, unit architecture with a dense net, uh, 169 feature extractor outperformed the other approaches where the unit with inception ResNet V2 backbone feature extractor achieved the second best result with a slightly lower performance rate. Uh, so based on the obtained result, we believe that dense module, inception modules, and also residual blocks um, combined with unit um, um, decoder part um, provides an efficient segmentation process that uh, also could overcome the issue of the over segmentation uh, problem here. In this image, we illustrate three segmentation output result produced by the uh, DenseNet 169, ResNet 15, and also uh, the baseline unit. As the result indicate, the examples are selected in the column of DenseNet uh, 169 um, showed an accurate uh, polyp segmentation from the background. Also, the DenseNet uh, 169 feature extractor uh, adequately address uh, the different noises um, present in the input image, including the, those shadows, uh, reflection, and also blurriness. Um, it also should be noted that the feature extractors such as ResNet 50 and also uh, baseline unit um, architectures uh, suffers from the over-segmentation issues. Uh, over-segmentation -segment highly affects the DICE score and Jacquard um, index uh, adversely. So the main cause of the over-segmentation is um, the low intensity variation between the foreground and the background, also the lack of the enough uh, spatial information. Thank you for your attention and also for your time to this presentation. Please uh, send me 
an email to saradatkastani at sanyusat.ca if you have any question regarding today's presentation.